So, writer, you are our traveling host. You yep. have been in a million different places. Where are you today? Uh, today I am in uh, Humboldt, California, wow. deep, deep nice. in Northern California. Nice. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, I know I've mentioned on the show before I did, I, I was solo parenting for three months. And yes. so my wife came home. Actually, she came home for a weekend in the middle of her shoot. Um, our, our son had a uh, rock show. And so she came home for like 48 hours for that. It was crazy and hectic can you, and maybe can you, not worth yeah, it. Can we, can can we you, get into can you, that real quick? Yeah, I'm sorry. We're going to need to go back to <laughs> our seven-year-old had a rock had a show. Rock show? You no, know, you know, it was, it, yes. Um, so there's an amazing um, place. Uh, it's like one of these uh, school of rock type, you know, okay. uh, kids, uh, music classes um, kind of place. And um, it's called Kid Row. In Los Angeles. <laughs> I love London. it. Nice. And so my son's been going there forever. And, you know, they basically form a band and learn songs. And so he performed some Imagine Dragon songs. Um, nice. And some other, um, yeah, it was amazing. Anyway. Well, that's much cooler than a geology show, which was the other option that it could have been. <laughs> and not that, not that that's a bad thing, but but still, a whole other way to go. Gotcha. Anthracite. Um, so, so, yeah, so she came home for 48 hours. And while she was home, she could see how, like, you know, overwhelmed I was with parenting and whatnot. And not only that, but but we had this plan. We're going to Alaska for three weeks this summer. Um, we're calling it Alaskan summer. And uh, <laughs> she was like, you need to go away and have, like, a week of just writing by yourself before Aww. you're going to be able to relax on our Alaskan summer. And I was like, thank you. Oh, so I'm in awesome. the middle of that right now. So how I, wonderful. You know, got a cabin up in Humboldt, and I'm just, yeah getting some time away before we head into a family vacation for three weeks. Ryder, nice. I already sang your praises for being able to single parent for three months um, because I have two children and I occasionally single parent for like an hour or two here and there. <laughs> and it's really hard. Yeah. I, it's just really hard to find any alone time. And that's what like literally I'm, I've been up here for two days and like yesterday it was just the weirdest sensation. I kept looking around being like, when, when's somebody going to tell me what I have to do or <laughs> where I have to pick somebody up or go do something or be cooking? And it was like, oh, no, I get to decide. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been nice. And Will, you're yeah, also no, traveling. I have so much sympathy for, uh, you know, full time solo parents out there, especially with multiple kids. It's just Shh. you just uh, yeah. never have, you know, it's like when you have a kid, it's like there's a part of your brain that's just constantly activated. Right. It's like you're always aware of your child. And and when you have a partner, you can share that load. <laughs> yeah. uh, and when you don't, it's just like, oh, that part of your brain never gets turned off. So it's just exhausting. It's like mentally exhausting if you or, you know, able to get some time to sleep or whatever. It's like you never quite feel alone. Um, yes. So that's, yeah, that's it's, wow. I, I And love Will, where are you? I am uh, in an undisclosed location. Uh, <laughs> my testimony is tomorrow. So I'm very excited. No, I am, uh, I am right outside of Chicago for Fan Expo Chicago. Uh, so big comic con and, uh, we were all here. This is, this is, I, I think I was with you. We were all in Chicago, weren't yeah. we? I can't remember. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the, yeah. That's the one like right near the airport basically. Yes. Right? So I'm like watching planes land as we speak right now. And, uh, yeah, I was bought by a much bigger company. So this is, I was in Denver last weekend, Chicago this weekend. Then I go from here to Hartford, then from there to Boston and then from there to Nova Scotia and then from there to San Francisco. So it's, wow. uh, here of the con. <clears throat> It is the kind of the mayor of the con. Yes, mayor we're of doing. The con. We'll we are on our twentieth anniversary of uh, Kim Possible, so we are uh, going wow. to going to do that run, and then we're doing our our other podcast, the I Hear Voices podcast, live at all of these big events. So it's a ton of fun. We're having so a fun. blast, so but it's a lot of traveling. Ryder went away to be alone, and you are meeting as many people as humanly possible. <laughs> exactly, and I just got over COVID, so I can <laughs> hug, kiss, lick anybody I want for no, like thanks. three months. <laughs> it's great. Well, I'm I'm just here in LA. I, I don't, was going to say, where I are don't, you? You're still I don't, home. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. I just... Uh, I will it. give you the you don't go anywhere. I absolutely disagree with the you don't do anything. You're doing nine true, things true. every hour. No, you're right. I do yeah. a lot of things. I do a lot of things. I you just do, do them ton. inside my house or in the immediate vicinity around my house. Um, <laughs> I am really excited for our episode today. We are recapping episode number 107, Grandma Was a Rolling Stone. And uh. we have our very first non-Boy Meets World related guest. And her name is Lauren Lapkus. Please welcome Yay. Lauren Lapkus to the pod. Hi. Hi. Oh my God, Hi, I'm so excited. 
This we is cool. are so excited. Please, I keep- love the I love the podcast. I was actually just listening to the re- the episode that came out today right before we started, so I didn't get to catch up completely, but I'm pretty caught up. Um, and it's so good. I was telling Danielle, I was like, I I was so surprised listening to the show, like how honest you guys are about it. <laughs> and I think it makes the podcast so good. It's like, I, I mean, I did a podcast called Raised by TV that writer was on that is was yes. like a nostalgia deep dive with my friend John Gabris, like going back into like all the TV we loved. And we talked about all this stuff, but like hearing you guys talk about your experience as kids doing the show, it just takes it to another level. It's so good. Like, it's so interesting to listen to. And the behind the scenes stuff is like blowing my mind. So well, I already love yeah, to awesome. like Thank look, go well, back and watch this kind of stuff, but to hear what was going on is like <laughs> amazing. Well, that means a lot coming from you because you are an absolute podcast pro. Uh, you are most known for Freedom and Comedy Bang Bang, and you are Emmy nominated. You were in Orange is the New Black. You're uh, the wrong Missy. I mean, your list of credits go on and well, on. Um, you're also one of my nearest and dearest and closest friends. Yes. And uh, yeah, we're just really excited to have you here. Can you tell me a little bit about like what your history or story with Boy Meets World is? Did you watch it as a kid? Oh my God, yes. I watched um, every episode 5 billion times. Um, (laughs) I think (laughs) I definitely watched it a ton. I watched TGIF every week for sure. That was like very exciting appointment TV for me. Um, Yeah, I've seen it all. And so and I've definitely rewatched it as an adult as well. Like it's, it's comfort food to me. Like I full house, step by step, boy meets world, all this stuff like feels like a certain like little, you know, blanket hole inside of my body. <laughs> um, it's so on. funny how that's true for so many people. Uh, it, yes. You know, like that. I, I don't know. Is it just the specific era or is that true of everybody for television shows that they grow up with. I, I don't, I don't know. know everybody for television shows. Yeah, I think it's a bit, because yeah. like doing doing my show, like we had people on who were older than me and like hearing the shows they cared about from like the 60s and stuff. I was like, okay, so it, right. it feels that way just to revisit that stuff no matter what, because it's such a right. perfect, you know, it's, it's not a perfect time. time in everyone's life, but it's a safe time in that your brain, that you don't know everything yet. Like right. you can just kind of completely disconnect by watching television because right. you're not really thinking about anything else like as a kid. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing for people with anxiety too, because it brings them right back to a time yeah. before all that happened. I mean, how much, how often do I talk about mash? And that's because right, that's, that's what it does. It's that same thing for me, that same yeah. feeling of like, Oh, I don't have to think I don't have to do anything. I just have to go back to a time where I'm sitting in front of the television watching Hawkeye Pierce. Like I it's know, just, and it's, it's been best. a while for me since I've like, um, gone back and watched a lot of shows, meaning of just a few years because I was doing that podcast. But like the, doing the podcast kind of um, took it to a different level for me because I was like revisiting them so deeply that I started to have less comfort from them. Because I was like, oh, it became some- your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. But like yesterday, I watched this episode that we're going to talk about, and I was like, oh, I should do this every day. This feels amazing. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I was like on the couch, like this is good. This is amazing. I'm not thinking about because also as an actor, I think like watching. I watch a lot of reality because I like to not think about acting. Totally. And, and like going back to what the shows I watched as a kid, I wasn't thinking about it that way. I wasn't thinking that you guys were real people. So like, it wasn't like, I wasn't going like, oh, I heard something about that guy. Oh, he's, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I don't know anything. I'm just watching a show of like, just a play that feels good. It's nice. Yeah. Who was your favorite character? Oh my God. And it better oh. be one of us. I mean, well, <laughs> I loved you all. Um, I love Topanga. Topanga was kind of like, um, I, w- I think I can safely say it's like everybody's goal in a different way. Like girls wanted to be her, boys wanted to date her. It's like she's such a like perfect character. She's so sweet, so funny. Um, and you played it so beautifully and you're so cute. It was yeah. like, that was a character that I think everybody loved. But Ryder, I mean, you had the haircut, which I know we've talked about. I mean... <laughs> The haircut was epic. Like at, at that point in time, and I and it was so interesting to hear you talk about how they like kind of made you have this haircut. Yeah. But it's like I <laughs> <laughs> This is trauma. I am. I am living no, trauma. Is, it's okay. Keep I'm talking. I'm so sorry. No, I know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Go to your as safe a space, girl Go in, to your the, safe like, space. in like middle school, it was like yeah. that's the ideal boy haircut. So cute. Um, <laughs> and obviously, well, I mean, you you had like some of the funniest moments on the show. I think 
without a doubt. I Hearing you talk about your yes. self-consciousness, watching it back is so funny because I'm just like, I watched it. This episode, it's an early episode. I'm oh, like, he'll get well, cocky by, so, episode, by season five. Oh, yeah. oh, by yeah. season we'll five, he's going to be like, let's watch that again. <laughs> <laughs> Can we roll that back? I was hysterical. You know, this man is not insecure as it goes on. He's going to be this, honest about those first couple episodes. <laughs> this brings up a very important question, to, in my opinion. I watched, we obviously all watched episode number 107, Grandma Was a Rolling Stone. We'll get into it in a little I bit. I have a but lot to say about this episode. This <laughs> was finally the very first episode you guys filmed, right? We've been talking about that for a long time. since. No, we, no, 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 no. The first one we the filmed Nikki, was the Nikki Cox episode. The Nikki Cox oh, episode. The Nikki yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny you say Nikki, Nikki yeah, Cox because I randomly could not sleep the other night. And then I was like, what was the name of that woman on the show with the talking buddy? And I got on my phone in the middle of the night in the dark. Figured out that it was Nikki Cox, and then I read yeah. her whole Wikipedia. I learned a lot. Well, she was <laughs> on Nikki Boy Meets This World. is a glimpse into she your life, She was my Laura. first girlfriend. My first <laughs> Tuesday girlfriend night when I Lord moved to Los Kiss. Angeles was Nikki Cox. She was 15. Really? I was 16. It was like, we dated for like a month. I think we held hands once. It was um, awesome. My mind is blown because then, I, my, well, that wasn't in the wiki. Um, no. But they <laughs> took it out. Somebody edited that out. Yeah. They did, they did mention that she It was dated, Nikki Cox. She dated Kevin <laughs> Cox. <She's laughs> nice. No, no, no. Thank you, She was like, who put that in there, Delete. Get out of there. We're going to keep Bobcat Goldfoyd in, but we're getting rid she of She was Will engaged Friedel. to Bobcat. <laughs> she was. My yeah. mind was blown. She was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And dated Kevin. Mm-hmm. I was like, how did that go down? I want to hear the podcast about that. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> Nikki and I reconnected like four or five years ago and had a really nice kind of email uh, exchange for a good two or three months. And then she dropped off the planet again. Oh. So she, well, she does that occasionally. But she gonna- was totally sweet. Wait, so where does this episode, number 107, fall in the order of where how you guys shot them? I believe right, uh, bef- right before or right after Corey's Alternative Friends. Okay. So this was either our, like, yeah. third or fourth one or right after Corey's Alternative Friends. This might have been immediately after that. I, I feel like it was after Corey's get, Alternative we, Friends. We started to get on track near here, yeah. didn't we? Like, now we, they kind of started to air where we shot them a little bit. Yes. Like, the first few were jumbled and then they kind of started to go in order. Yeah, but this is clearly where they were writing one for you, Will. I mean, this this feel, I mean, besides this, obviously the guest, you know, the grandma storyline. Yeah, it, it feels like this is where. And I remember filming this one and watching those scenes with you and realizing how funny you were. This was. So an I think that this episode. was where we were sort of Eric finally found his voice. I well, that's so what too. I was gonna say. I actually yeah, was yeah. thinking this was like the first episode you guys filmed, and I was gonna say, how did? Why did you get worse after this one? Because you were just. <laughs> Amazing! No, this is where he hit his stride. This is the episode where he hit his stride. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. This is this is like Eric's. Eric was Eric, and a lot was the first time for. I mean, I remember finally getting the 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 the, the stones, the gall to to go. I'm going to go talk to Michael Jacobs. I mean, he was this mythical creature that I was 16 <laughs> at the time, and I was like, I, I oh my god! But I went and I actually I said Mark because I'm not sure I knew his name, Michael. <laughs> um, I want to do a scene with William Daniels. And this was, mm. like, I think, maybe two weeks before he did this one. And he said, all right, well, we're writing something, but I'll make sure there's more in there for it. And then he came up to me. He's like, you, you're going to like what you got. You're going to like what you got. And so this, I like, I asked, like, please let me I work with that. Bill. That's so and great, Will. it worked. Like, the yeah, two of the, you totally. never, we, we, we've talked in a lot of these episodes about pairing people up. Like, they keep trying to pair people up. And you never know what's going to work and what's going to match and what's not going to match. <laughs> and it worked. It was, for some reason, Eric it's and so Bill... Funny. You know, Eric and Feeney worked together and kind of then became the template for a lot of the stuff that happened in the future. I mean, it was it was more Feeney and Corey early, but then it really like I was always partnered up with Bill. But I want to talk about this later when we get into it, because there are there are key differences to the relationship at this point between you and Bill. I feel like the characters are very different than. Oh, yeah. But you started yeah, we can to talk see about it. little nuggets of Eric being stupid and little yes. nuggets of just this little and little, just yeah. tiny little, oh, he's not as smart as we think. Um, <laughs> well, so, let's yeah, jump into it. It was great. Yeah, please. Yeah. So... The episode is about that Feeney's niece is coming for a visit and Eric gets Morgan to help in asking her out. But he's also getting Morgan to ask a lot of girls out. Uh, Corey and the kid's grandma come for the weekend and she makes a promise to Corey, but he is disappointed when she leaves early and he misses out on a fishing trip uh, that Sean ends up going on with Alan Matthews. So this was directed by David Trainer, as all the episodes in the first and second seasons were. The writers, Michael Jacobs, April Kelly and Ed Dechter. 
who was one of the EPs at the time. I didn't know that Dector and Strauss ever wrote episodes separately. Did they? I, I thought this was either, a Dector actually. and Strauss. Well, this, I, I, just my rundown Dector? just says Ed Dector, but that doesn't really? necessarily mean I that it wasn't Dector and Strauss. I think if memory serves, it says Dector and Strauss on the, in the opening crawl, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll double check that. Yeah, they yeah. always wrote together. Yeah. Um, so wait, this was, you said this aired out of order? So no, that's yeah. why you weren't there yet, Danielle? No, I had already, so it aired actually, it's possible that they filmed this right before I had been on an episode or they filmed it right after I had been on an episode, but I was in episode 104. Corey's Alternative Friends. And oh, Topanga okay. was only supposed to be in that one episode. After I did that one episode, they knew they wanted to bring me back for more, but it hadn't. I hadn't already been included in storylines. So there were still many episodes that yeah. they did that I wasn't in because- well, How many I, did you end up doing in the in the first season? Were you in like after- I think after, I'm like, in a the total ninth? of 13. Okay, like, okay. May, so you did and half the season, the good. first I season? I think so. I think once I come back, I may be in every one after that, but for- okay. I, I don't sense. really know, um, but I feel like I did close to thirteen. But we'll figure. We'll see after the season's over. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know. And were you still a guest at that point? Were you considered recurring? N- I was. Or you I a was series just regular a guest. No, I was not was a recur- series regular. I was recurring in season one, and then I was a recurring series regular. Two. I w- well, I was a se- I was considered a series regular in season two, but I still didn't get to do every episode. So oh, I was a series uh-huh. regular uh-huh. who was guaranteed thirteen. And then I think I ended up doing like 19 out of 22 or something. You did, you did like the poster shoot and everything for season two though, didn't you? Like, aren't you on all the posters no, and all the press and everything for I season two? Season, no? I don't think she And I don't even think she gets opening credits until season three. I don't, we'll have to, we'll have to yeah. find out. But I remember so it being confusing and I remember being upset on your behalf. Uh, <laughs> like, it was I honestly, remember even uh, then being uh, like, can, she's working so hard and yeah. she's not part and of the if main you cast. Got, we've talked about it for sure privately, but if you guys knew... The pay disparity. Yeah. Even I after I became a series regular. And it was always um, the excuse that was used was that, well, we didn't know you were going to be on the show. We didn't know you. We weren't anticipating you. It like, doesn't when, make any sense. No. But, but you just by have to go season when two, you get the credit that someone else has. You did know. By yeah. season two, I was accounted for. I get that in season one, I wasn't a part of the budget. You weren't anticipating having another series regular. But right. like by season two, that excuse should go out the window. And then season three rolled around and it was still the same excuse. And there was. We'll, we'll get to it. I don't remember exactly where it was. I'll have to do some research with contacting Judy Savage, who was my agent at the time. I'll have to ask Judy, her. And my no dad may remember. Savage, no, no relation to Ben Savage. No relation to Ben Savage. Okay. No my relation. <laughs> my yeah. fantastic. Fantastic agent. Yeah. Ryder and I had the same agent for most of the show. Wow. And she was fantastic. Still is fantastic. And her agency, the Savage Agency, is still a fantastic Wonderful. kids agent if you're looking to get mm-hmm. your kid an agent. Um, <laughs> All right. I'll no, we'll have, to get, we'll have yeah. to get into that. Because, <laughs> sign Holly. <laughs> because you were seriously, I mean, there's still the pay disparity there. When Then they are clearly building Corey and Topanga as a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, so I, had to, like, I had to threaten to not show up to a table but read. But you were and lucky I, to be on a TV show. Yeah. Exactly. Why you, just, you were lucky to be on a TV show, working. little girl. And little by girl. the way, that is how I felt. Exactly. Of course. Right. Judy That's why and- you need grown ups like agents and, you know, parents who are, you know, and, and unfortunately, why would your parents be willing to, you know, they don't, they're not comfortable in the industry. My they're dad was listening to your dad. Oh, or, your dad. You know, oh my yeah, dad yeah, yeah, was yeah, not yeah. having it. My no, dad and Judy oh, yeah, Savage were doing the negotiations Good. with ABC yeah. and Good, or Disney. Judy was a pit bull. She was amazing. And, and fight. they said yeah. to us, you're not, you, you have to not go. And I was sobbing. Of course. <gasps> I have to go. Of it's my job. Oh my God, and I can't imagine. You're going to lose this job for me. And that's what I kept saying to Judy and my dad was because they would be like, listen, what, you know, th- this is what you should be getting. This is where we're at. And the only way to get it is if they know that you're serious about not coming back unless you get treated fairly. And I was like, but I don't feel that way. <laughs> like, just, I'll do anything. <laughs> just do not lose this just, job for me. That's that. how I exactly. feel. If they end up firing oh me God. because I don't show up to a table read, I will never speak to my family yeah. ever again. It's so scary. Um, and oh I did. I ended up, I ended up not showing up. This is such sausage of child actor. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, this is how the sausage gets made. I know. Well, awful. anyway, I'm not in this episode. Okay. Let's talk about this episode. <laughs> So this is a huge episode for Boy Meets World because we have two amazing guest stars. Oh Rue God. McClanahan. I was is, so excited. Right? Yeah. And she got yeah. the she got the guest star applause. She, it was oh, huge. she did right when she came in. It was yeah. nuts. I yeah. wanted to ask you about that. Can I pause already? Yes. yes okay. Of course. <laughs> um, did, uh, did the audience at that point know she was there or was that a surprise reveal? 
they save her. And uh-huh. it's, a, it's, it's a surprise reveal. Is so they, they introduce the re- main cast. It always was. Whenever you had a big guest star like that, you save them. So you introduce the really main cast. But do you think a group of kids, didn't they, didn't they make them clap? Do you really think a group of kids knew who Rue McClanahan was? <laughs> No, but you have to remember, she was, I mean, Golden Curls was not that long before our yeah. show. No, you know, I mean, it know, seems like again, distant history now, but she was not a, a huge whole bunch of 11 star. year olds that were like, we got to get home and see Golden well, Girls. Will, they had applause lights. I also, yeah, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. I also they, 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 they literally had applause that's signs. What I'm saying. They told <laughs> yeah. them to clap. It wasn't like, I'm we're sure. holding Rue McClanahan <laughs> back because she's a huge star for 11 year olds. But, but they I did loved her. Back. her. They, I was they, eleven. They were... I loved her. I watched Golden Girls from five years old on. Like I, that was, and that show also really holds up. Just so, oh, you it's, know. it's an amazing show. Being hilarious, but so it's funny. Yeah. Still scares yeah. people that the girl, the women on Golden Girls were in their fifties. I could. I looked up her age on this episode because I was trying to do the math, and I was like, she's in her fifties on this. They were I was like in she's their fifties. <laughs> the Golden Girls. My wife cried when she found out. <laughs> That the Golden <laughs> Girls were in their fifties. It's not right. And the oldest one was the was younger than yes. her daughter. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, Sophia yeah. was younger than uh, yeah. Dorothy. Uh, but oh anyway, <laughs> no. So they. So Rue, can I, can I just very quickly? Here's one thing that was amazing about this episode to me. I remember Rue McClanahan being in like every scene, and she mm-hmm. wasn't. She was in like two scenes of the show. I I remember her yeah. being like yeah. the crux of the thing, but it was really about how she wasn't there. Right. And, so did, that was and did you have memories of meeting her? Yeah, I mean, yes. Do you, Ryder, do you remember meeting her? No. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, have, I remember because no. it was just in I the... I never had a scene with her. So. Yeah, it was, it was, it was very, she was very sweet. I mean, again, from, from what I remember and she kind of came in and it was, she did her stuff and she was very professional and like she didn't hang out with us or anything. But um, she was very nice. You know, she, she came in and did her thing, but I was a huge Golden Girls fan. So I was... Floored. I wondered yeah. if they were trying to have her come back as a recurring character. It seemed like sh- like that would have been the smart move if they Perfect, could get her. Right? Yeah. Right. When I yeah, saw like, the title, I thought, "Oh no, Grandma dies." And then I saw who the grandma was. I was like, "No, she doesn't." <laughs> <laughs> Episode seven of Boy Meets World. I know. Already I was like, killing it's a bit heavy. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Are we are we jumping into the living room scene? Have we already passed the? Well, no, the no, we haven't. No, we can't. We haven't even started. Okay. I haven't I'm even sorry. said that our second guest star <laughs> is Carrie Russell. Yes. Yeah. Right. So Huge. Carrie Russell as Jessica, Feeney's niece, and then now we are into the episode. Oh, We're right, in Feeney's backyard. Corey and Sean are picking snails off of Feeney's plants for when they go fishing. Alan says fish don't eat snails. Feeney laughs, saying he was mistaken. And I wrote down that this is maybe the first time I've seen uh, Feeney smile. I had to rewind wow. it. Because I was like, I want to get exactly what's happening here. Does every, does it? <laughs> you were already confused, huh? I wasn't confused, but I thought if I was a kid, I don't think I would get this joke. And then so I was like, I want to understand the joke. Okay, he's saying you have to pick snails. And then he's just trying to get them to take the snails off his plants. But they, right. he's, he's convincing them. I, I mean, I got it. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> nine. But I did just rewind it to go, let's just see how this plays out. Um, it, it, it wasn't was, a, a huge laugh, really. It, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. It didn't kill, but it I was don't good. know that it was an A plus joke. <laughs> but no. sure, but, but it was it's a cold cute. open. It's but cute. going to what we've talked about before, where all the other Saved by the Bells and all the shows at the time, the kids always pull the fast one on the teacher. It's kind of interesting to see mm. the teacher pulling a fast one oh, on the kids yes. every once in a while. No, yeah. you're yeah. right, and it you're was right. cute. Like I thought, Sean and Corey's reaction was very cute, and they're kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a second. George. And you know, this is the second time Feeney has pulled a fast one because we, it was at the pilot where Corey. The painted shutters. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. It's on the fence where Corey is like, I'm, I'm, you're going to pay me this amount. And he adds it up wrong. And Feeney's like, okay, great. So it's like, yeah, he's. <laughs> Feeney's uh, pulling a fast one on all the kids left he and is. right here. And uh, like I said, it's the first time where you really fe- see Feeney smile and you realize that he has a life and interests outside of being a teacher. And it's it's actually very endearing to watch. Um, and Ryder, I'd like to talk about your clothes again. Are, <laughs> is this, was this a... Well, my clothes are all I got because I did. Do I have any lines in this scene? I don't think yeah, I do. you do at the I, end. No, at I the end it. you do. I don't think I do, man. You I know what? You don't need them. No lines, you exclamation point in my nose. Bye, You say bye, dad. <laughs> That's don't not you in remember? This scene. That's, that's not in this scene, man. No, no, no. You don't, no, no, you like, don't oh, you need lines. Meant, I thought you said the episode. Yeah, you have, <laughs> no, yeah. this scene, I literally you. like walk all the way across the room and like yep. post up on the bench. Listen, and no one noticed that you didn't have like, lines because, like Lauren is saying, you didn't need them. <laughs> Natural charisma. You don't need a. You don't need to say a word. <laughs> Stole we, we get the whole. We get. We get it all. 
But I do want to know, do you remember at all? This was a, so you had on a bright blue long sleeve, a -hmm. pattern short sleeve that comes down to mid forearm. And then there is a white hooded thing Mm. that I can't see what that is under a denim vest. But I believe the white hood may be sewn into the vest. I think so. Yes. Okay. So it was a twofer. Yeah. (laughs) You yeah. wow, two shirts and then I a thought this was a pretty vest. good looking outfit as far as the uh, it fit. The Sean. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was smaller. It was more tailored to you, and they've managed to get the look of four shirts with only giving you three shirts. <laughs> yeah, how did you not Amazing. melt every night wearing thirty two <laughs> layers oh, well, under the lights? This light? is why I was panicked about changing clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you, you remember that the sets are thirty six degrees on tape nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's abs. It's literally it's always freezing. Forty ish, forty ish yeah. degrees. And then with the lights on, we're all still sweating. But anyway, okay. So they (sighs) realize that Feeney knows how to fish and Eric is not going fishing because he has discovered girls. So then we are into the living room. Eric is training Morgan to help (laughs) him meet girls. And here's the pair up that we often talk about, Will, where you are with Lily Nixay Morgan. Yeah. And you're feeding her treats like a pet. Um, (laughs) Like you do. And now Will, you- And your mom loved it. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. All on board. Oh, you're going to take your little sister to the mall at 16 to bribe her to get help you get women, girls. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good for you was the was the answer we got. It's like, OK, OK, thanks. here's my question. And maybe we need to watch it back. But I think you are lip reading Lily a little bit. Am oh, I? Oh, remember I, how we I love it? Oh, when I can a- see that. Oh, no, 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 yes. no, 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 no. I am because it's her it. lines, right? That's her it's line. Like, I'm getting her to. Oh, so you're to, that's like layers oh, to the acting. acting. I, I think so. Acting. I, I, I don't know. All I, I wrote down like Will's lip reading. Yeah, no, that was that, that was a Michael Jacobs note. That was or lip syncing. That was a Michael Jacobs it, note. He said when she says Ma- the line, mouth along with her, right. like you're like, oh my god, she's getting oh, the okay. line right. So it's yeah, part yeah, of the yeah. bit, right? That yeah, makes yeah, sense. Part it's, of the bit. it's to make it very obvious that you're the one who told her what to say. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, and that's not to say at some point in the future I won't lip read somebody else totally <laughs> by my own fault. But in that yeah. that one sense, it was a Michael <laughs> Jacobs note. Did you ever call her Weasel like after season? No, Weasel no, was that, for that, that was we- like I'm Energy Boy. Like Weasel, they tried to make that work for three episodes, and they're like, "Well, we're not going to do that anymore." And that was it. I and think it's really just- cute. You did it in a previous episode where you yeah. called her Weasel, mm-hmm. and then you nicknamed the nickname was Weeze. I just thought it was really cute. I wish I wish it would have stuck around. Yeah, and they they tried to make Eric and Morgan work like that was going to be a thing, and then that and it just didn't. It was very so, cute, yeah. and that yeah, little girl was so. so great. She's yeah. so yeah. sweet. She's, she was adorable. She's yeah. very funny. Um, and then we hear a Winnebago playing La Cucaracha and grandma comes through the front door. And, and this is the most show busy 90s sitcom entrance I've ever seen in my <laughs> totally. life. I love it. It was perfect. just, it was a reminder of like how much we were still like in the live show business. You know what I mean? Like it felt very old timey in a way that you just don't have that anymore. Like You, you know, were that. in the perfect window. That was like the best. I mean, I still think that was the best TV, but it's like, that yeah. was the most fun you could have. Like someone making an entrance like that, everyone going yeah. crazy, like waiting yeah. for it to die down. Like that's just so fun. Hold for laughs. on for a while. Yeah. Hold for your laughs. laughs. We'd hear that every week. Hold <laughs> for your laughs. Yeah. You know what else uh, I noticed first here and then it ca- came back around when in the scene with Corey and Alan in the kitchen when he's making the sandwich. The way we used props in us in scenes to actually really make it feel natural and like Mm -hmm. what somebody does when they come in and they've got gifts and they've got a backpack and they're pulling things out and they're showing things and like still doing all of that while outward facing toward the camera and remembering all of her lines. It was like yeah, it was Everyone, just good it acting felt business. Great. It fe- yeah. it did. It felt like a big performance. And she, I mm-hmm. mean, she is a superstar. It just feel you yeah. you felt like a superstar just walked on to the set. Yeah. It was really fun. I mean, what an entrance. Um, so they're all excited to see grandma. She's got gifts for everybody. She says she's staying for the weekend. Everybody's got to cancel their plans. Grandma's gonna take Morgan shopping. She's gonna take Eric to go meet girls at the auto show. And she she's knows going everybody's yes. everybody's special thing. She yep. goes right to them. Do exactly yeah, and then with Corey, it's baseball. Do, yeah. It's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. The Cal Ripken card, uh, his rookie card, and they're gonna go get it signed. And Corey jumps on grandma and uh Which was pretty aggressive. I think the jumping, I was looking at 
Rue going, is she okay? She's like falling back on Morgan. I she's was like, like crushing Lily. Yeah. She, that's the thing that I saw. It's like, oh man, they're like about to kill this little girl. <laughs> Everyone's fine. Do you guys remember though that kind of like the rehearsal stuff with that? Michael was very big on um, being very real with your physical moves. I remember it on Girl Meets World too, where he'd be like, no, I really need the girls to fly through the bedroom window. And it was like, you mean you want them to appear as though they fly through the bedroom window. They can't right. actually fly through the bedroom window. But he, if, if it meant somebody was going to fall on someone and jump on someone, he's like, what do we have to do? Do we have to put pillows? Like, how do we make it happen? You just need to make it happen. I want that to, I want that to happen. I want Ben to jump on her and I want her to fall back on Lily. Like I can remember those rehearsals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, he, that really, he, 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 you said real, but it's actually the opposite. I think he, he wants to actually, he wants it to be physical comedy. That's real. Yeah. But the way he envisions it and the way he writes it is often extremely cartoony. That's exactly so what I mean. He, right. yes. So on the page, it would be this cartoony thing. He's like, no, no, no. We pick them up and we throw them through the door. Correct. And then you're like, that's not the way reality works. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd have to explain, you know, but then there are some actors like Mr. Wilford L who could who can just pull stuff, pull magic tricks, uh, you know, physically can do stuff that seem impossible. Like we'll get to the bag throwing later, you know, like that is a very cartoony script beat that will pulls off miraculous. And it's hysterical. You know, he makes it his own. Those are the kinds of things that, like, that's why Michael loved writing for somebody like Will is that Will would just throw his body wholly into these things, you know? Um, and then there are a lot of times when actors just have a hard time doing that, you know, yeah. and it is, it's old school's, uh, you know, live acting style to be, you have to really embody it. You have to physically do these kinds of crazy things. But yeah, Michael had, um, had a cartoony vision of, of how human reality worked. Yeah. And but I think it also like, in that corner. it's like really clear uh, when you're describing that, that that's part of what made the show so like long lasting because totally. it's like, there's such an extreme commitment all the time. And I think a lot of shows that get canceled really fast, you're lacking that like, there's like a clear tone and like decisions being made about like that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And like what yep. you were saying about all the props, Danielle, like even like making the muffins and stuff, like it felt so real. Like it's just like, oh, yeah. he's walking in the kitchen. His mom's really doing that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. There, some shows didn't have that for sure. <laughs> yeah, there was a writer. That was the perfect way of saying it. It was written very on the page. It was written very cartoon like. But what he wanted was very real physical comedy. He actually right. wanted a character to touch the other character. I want Rue McClanahan to have her shoulders be shaken and Lily being crushed under her grandma. Like I can I can I can remember him, even though I was not there. I can envision it right now that I can during a run through. He was probably like, no, you actually need to jump on her shoulders. And Lily, mm -hmm. you get buried under your grandma like <laughs> yeah. that. That was a vision that would be very important yeah. to him. Um, yeah. And I do think that part of the reason for that is that it helps sell the relationship between the family. You buy that they're a real family that sure. does this and has this mm -hmm. dynamic all the time. So and it not, does go not, a long way. Not to get too psychological, but Michael Jacobs was a huge comic book fan, like, <clears throat> like a ridiculous amount of comic books. And as a comic book nerd, you're reading something that's cartoony, but you want it to be real. You want <laughs> right. Superman to be real. You want Batman right. to be real. You want, and so, so you see these bold, big exactly. cartoony moves on the page, exactly. and then you're imagining them. Yeah, and, and yeah. Then you want them to be real. So that's kind of what you do. Okay, so we continue into the living room. Grandma and Eric walk in, and uh, Eric shows Corey his arm signed by the Lamborghini <laughs> girl. Um, I knew girl. that. So I'm sitting there watching the episode with my wife. I swear to you, I have not seen it any amount of this episode since it first aired. And about 30 seconds before, I turn to my wife and I go, Graziella Terziana. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it too. The second you said that name, I was like, oh, I remember that. I we used to say that. Name. I guess we said it for years afterwards, but I totally, I, totally remembered the name too. It was so funny. I absolutely remember the name. The other thing my wife said <laughs> Halfway through the first scene, she went, why is your head nodding so much? <laughs> and I was, I was just, I'd sit in the background. You were, you were Everybody had a, a line and I would agree. I'd just agree with what everybody <laughs> said. I George Clooney it the whole time. I was just nodding my head. To but you had said, a good haircut too. I don't think we, I don't think it's Thank talked you. about enough. You had well, a good when haircut. You're standing next to Ryder. If you're if you're the ugly show pony, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole cast, great hair, great hair. And then you Carrie know, Russell comes in. I mean, and, and then, then like, Carrie oh Russell comes in. in. I mean, I know. I, I, I wrote that down too. That you know they cast Carrie Russell partially because of that hair. Michael has a hair obsession he for does. sure. Another level with <laughs> Carrie Russell. So uh, he's got his arm signed by Graziella Terziana, the Lamborghini girl. They compare the Lamborghini girl to Cal Ripken. Corey is like, you cannot compare. Cal Ripken's way better. Grandma said she 
she's tired. Her dogs are barking. She takes her shoes off. <laughs> and uh, Corey asks, but you're not too tired to take me tomorrow to meet Cal Ripken. And she says, absolutely not. I'm so excited to spend the day with you tomorrow. Um, and then uh, in the kitchen, Eric uh, hears Feeney knocking on the back door. So he lets him in. Feeney asks how to entertain a girl Eric's age. And Eric asks if Feeney... <laughs> Is dating a teenage girl. <laughs> and then would. Eric raises his eyebrows like it's very cool. If uh, wouldn't that is be cool if dating Mr. Feeney could be a teenage oh, girl? So Yikes. gross. Yikes. And it's just a moment that doesn't Yikes. land well. What does he say? No. Like, not since the Eisenhower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, Yikes. Hey, 70 year old man, are you dating a teenage girl? <laughs> Yikes. And you're uh, a teacher? Like, that would be the grossest ugh. thing. You could tell even in the way the audience laughs, though, it kind of falters a little bit. Yeah, like, like, I, could, huh? I could hear a couple people being like, ooh, like, yeah. that would not be good. <laughs> not I don't want to think about Mr. Feeney dating. I don't yeah. want to think about but Mr. Feeney dating a teenager. His, his answer this is not right. was perfect. It, not yes. since the Eisenhower administration. And then you yeah. get it that he's like, ew, disgusting. You know he thinks it's gross and, and we're all saved and we can go back to loving Mr. Feeney. Um, <laughs> so this is the scene that I remember during run through, like realizing how much of a genius too. Will was. And I remember – the the excitement in the room for the for the first run through because you know I obviously hadn't been there for the rehearsals for this but even just I remember little beats like the way Will was eating the pizza because it was it, during the run through you 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 got the pizza and you you know Danielle you were talking earlier about Rue walking in with all the the business like business is so essential for acting you know it's like what you do with your hands it's, it, and it's always a way to sort of get out of your head and to to make yourself busy without being too focused on the conflict within the scene with another actor. So business is like an essential writing, acting, directing technique. And Will, you found this business with the, the pizza. And I don't even know if, it, I can't remember if it was written or not, but watching it when we were in rehearsals and you actually held a piece of pizza for the rehearsal. And then like, even just you stumbling back into the chair on your way, it was like, you just clearly found your comedic voice this week, I feel like, um, I agree. as an this actor. Was... And it was such a fun, like, oh my God, and of course, to be up it. against Bill as the straight man, you know, mm -hmm. like your character, yeah. and 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 you know, it just portends what's what's to come, which is but so I, much more of this, right? Like I, the, yeah. the rest of the scene, the rest this of the show, scene, though, this scene is going to play out in some form or another many, many times, and this one is really good. Yeah, this scene was was nuts for me because I was just so happy to be working with Bill. I finally felt a joke, like when you, it's you, you know, when you. When you hit a joke, when you actually hit a joke, you can feel it. It's like you're ring, mm -hmm. ringing a tuning fork. And I'd never felt that before. Right. And I was like, That's so oh, exciting. I, it is. It's huge. It's like, oh, man, I, I got it. And the first one of the first big laughs I ever got was a mistake. And it was a mistake during that scene. And it was our first run through ever. And the line is, I would love to meet your niece, Mr. Feeney. And I said, I would love to meet your feast, Mr. Nini. <laughs> And the writers and producers went, like laughed hysterically, and it was written on the chalkboard in the writer's room, I want to meet your feast, Mr. Nini, for the rest of the season. <laughs> and they're like, how do we top this? this? So well. oh yeah, it was just, I remember them. And hearing, even though I did it as a mistake, hearing that natural laughter blast you from one side, because they're standing there, you know, next to you, was, was it's a drug. It's a man. I was but like, you know, oh, it's I got to chase it's that. Also, but it's also the fact that they laughed and welcomed your mistake was, yeah. you know, that's part of the safety net that you need to, in order to, to find comedy and to be funny. And I think, like, especially as kids, you're always terrified that you're going to do something wrong. And, yeah. like, you think that messing up your lines or saying the words out of order is going to ruin it. And then you've, you know, not done your job. And the fact that they laughed and made it part of it, like, no, no, this scene totally worked. It doesn't matter that you said feast nini or whatever. That, like... I'm sure was a huge step into comfort, you know, and yeah. recognizing that like you can stumble, you can screw things up. And like, that's not the point. The point is to just be funny and to be confident and to, you know, let yourself allow yourself the freedom to make mistakes. Yeah, it was great. This yeah. is, this is by far, I would argue this is my, as an actor, my most important episode of the entire show. Like it, this helped me kind of find my voice and feel more comfortable and yeah, it was, this was great for me. There really was like a light switch had just been flipped and you yeah. were lit up from within and suddenly you were in your skin. And it was, I mean, it really is. Cause I, I was saying all along, you've been hard on yourself in the other episodes, but seeing you in this episode compared to what we had seen in the previous episode, I, it is very apparent that you were uncomfortable before and that yeah. now you are very comfortable. So welcome too, Will yeah. Friedel to <laughs> the show. You. I have joined the show as Eric Matthews in episode seven. So <laughs> Feeney just really, 
really wants to know how you keep a teenage girl entertained. And uh, he says, basically, it's some combination of dinner and a movie, dinner and a movie. And um, but Eric says, you know, oh, I, I definitely cannot entertain your niece for you. I have strep throat. And, I love that bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? Oh. Get, do, yeah. As he was eating the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so Corey comes down into the kitchen. Um, actually, so that you guys end that scene. That, you're not going to entertain his niece, and he basically leaves. And then Don't we're still. Don't mock what I am, Mister Fear. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that was, and that was, yeah, kind of a like a. It was like a. It was a funny joke, but they went out kind of hard on it. Like it was yeah. a kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Don't do that to him. <laughs> that was so cool. How rude, Feeny. Um, so then the next scene is still in the kitchen. Corey walks down and he asks where grandma is. And Amy is um, baking blueberry muffins. And Corey, she asks if Corey wants to help. Uh, then Eric comes down and asks how long he can go without taking a shower so that he can keep his autographed arm intact. <laughs> Yikes. And then Eric spots... Carrie Russell as girl, girl. Jessica in the backyard. Yeah. And the way you say it, they're like, oh, I've got other interests other than girl, girl, girl. There she is. It was really funny. <laughs> Can I say one thing about um, the mom I thought was really sweet? Like, and I think maybe this is my adult version of myself watching the show now, but there was like, he says like, what, what, something about the grandma. And then she's like, why don't we make muffins? I'm like, she knows something. She already knows. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. as a kid, you don't catch that at all, but it's, there's something sweet about her just like, pivoting his interest into something Attention. else. Yeah. yeah. No, it was really great. And, yeah. and, and Betsy played that so great because it was yeah. like, you could tell, but kept the scene moving, but you could, just enough to be like, oh, no. This yeah. Is and the yeah. parents, I mean, you've talked about it a bit when you had um, Rusty, Rusty on, <laughs> and but it was, they're both so um, genuine and it yeah. feels so comforting to watch them. I think that's also a big part of like this ensemble that's so, like they, they have such a nice grounding weight that, um, carries it that you don't really realize when you're watching it as a kid but yeah. it's like oh the parents are such an integral part of the show because it's like they're they're keeping this sort of like all these kids who are often doing all these funny things like they're kind of just like weighing it down giving it like real yeah. like real life well, they're so relaxed you yeah. know they, they, they yeah. don't they don't get yeah. rattled that's yeah. the thing neither one of them as characters or as actors ever feel out of control <laughs> and yeah. that's really important i think you know and we'll talk about it later but i you know when when rusty and ben have their scene I was surprised by how, like, it actually minimizes all this, the conflict. Yes. You know, like, because Rusty's like, yeah, that's his mom, man. I, I've always yeah. loved her. Yeah. But no, that's, I love you know, and that's that like scene. a wonderful, like, oh, it's all this problem, then all this feeling of, like, lack of love is, oh, okay, we'll get to it. But no, yeah. that's anyway, yeah, I think amazing. that that's to your point, to your point, the parents are intentionally in control. You know, yes. they're just not, yeah. they're cool. Can they're, I, Lauren, they're, can you I know, ask you a they're question? They're rattled. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Because this is, you, you, you brought it up a little bit, and it's something that we've touched on a little bit. You said you watched this as a kid and now you're watching as an adult. Is it like watching a whole different show because you're seeing it through the eyes of an adult now? I do think there's a bit of that. I mean, now I, I also have the experience of doing multicam shows myself now. So that adds like a layer of like understanding that I didn't have. But I think just the storylines, I am seeing them diff I see it differently as an adult. Like th that thing, I mean, just noticing like, oh, she has a secret that she's not telling him. It's like, oh, she's trying to take care of him. She's being a good mom. It's like. Definitely wasn't caring about that, you know, at the right, time. I'm right, going like, what does right. Corey want to do, you know? So, like, not <laughs> thinking about it that way. But it's nice to see it that way. I think, like, and seeing Feeney, like, and thinking about these actors and listening to you guys talk about it, I think is is opening up this other just world of thought with it. Just how, you know, these adult actors were coming into the show, having interesting careers and then going like, I'm going to do this show that's focused on a child. And like, what does that mean for me? And like, is this what I want to do? And, and the yeah. ways that they come into it and, and like rise to that and, and like actually elevate the show so much that within the way they probably weren't expecting to bring, you know, as like taking that job or like um, what they're signing up for, you know, but it's, it's like it, it, it made the show so much more in a way that you don't fully recognize when you're just watching at surface level. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a different watching it as an adult for sure. Um, cool. Side note, my friend, I was just thinking, my friend in sixth grade went to a taping, and I was so jealous. <gasps> she went to L.A. and with her dad, and he took her to see Boy Meets World, and she had the what? script. Um, oh, I don't wow. know how she got the script, but she brought it back, and I was Theft. like, "Wow!" And I they would like do contest. You no, know, they would do contests during our tape night to give away signed scripts. Oh, okay, amazing. Oh, so, was there really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I you don't remember, remember that we would now. sign ten no. scripts every night. 
Every tape night, we would sign 10 scripts and then, or five, or I think it was 10, and then they would give them out by, you know, kids got up and sang or people got up and did anything. They would have contests. Mitch, Gosh, I would remember run the contest, contest, but it was for a script. Yeah. I do remember. Yeah, they would, we that, would those have were the to prizes for signed some. scripts. So wow. there's a lot of people out there who probably have signed, you know, full cast signed. And I think even the guest stars would sign them um, for that week. So oh, yeah, awesome. I remember every last tape night week. before we went backstage, we'd have to sign 10 scripts. Yeah, yeah, last week at Comic Con, I signed a number of scripts that I could tell were original. They had. They had been ripped off, but they had the stickers in the upper right-hand corner where the where oh, our so names would go. So they were scripts. actual, like I signed a number of them where it's like, oh, so somebody's kind of flooding the market with these, and they had ripped off whoever it was wow. who had got it to and conceal I was like, their identity. Yeah, but I was like, that is, these are real. And I said to the guys, like, I wonder if this is real. I was like, no, this this is real. I can tell this is real. Cool. So uh, yeah, those are starting to, to come out now. Hmm. That's fun. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> right, here's a really, really, really inside baseball question, but I honestly can't remember. Did we use letters or numbers for our scenes? This is a big divide in the sitcom Le- world. Letters. Sometimes letters. Letters. Yeah, letters. One, letters. Scene a. So scene A. Yeah. So we had yeah, act yeah, one, yeah. scene yeah. A. Yes. Scene, yeah. Okay, that's right. And okay. it's still well, in Was it the same on Girl? I- yeah. I don't know. If, yeah. Are you sure we didn't yeah, do numbers? So. Okay, cool. I couldn't remember. I was like, you know, because it becomes so important. Like, what scene are we in? Yeah. And in sitcoms, they either do one, 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 two, one, three, or one A, one B, one C. We or, do letters. Know, however. And yeah, it's still ingrained letters. in me because as I'm watching the episode, I'll be writing notes and I'll be like, oh, it's the cold open. It's act one, scene A. I'll, yeah. I'll still write that out as I'm doing it. Yeah. Okay, this conversation is going amazingly well, and we have so much more to get to with Lauren Lapkiss. So we are going to split this up into two episodes. So I hope you don't mind. Join us for the next episode. You will not be disappointed. We love you all. Pod dismissed. Pod Meets World is an iHeart podcast produced and hosted by Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong. Executive producers Jensen Karp and Amy Sugarman. Executive in charge of production, Danielle Romo. Producer and editor, Tara Sudbach. Producer, Lorraine Verwez. Engineer and Boy Meets World superfan, Easton Allen. Our theme song is by Kyle Morton of Typhoon. Follow us on Instagram at Pod Meets World Show or email us at podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com.